We're going to do some stuff and then I'll everybody and uh, welcome to another episode of the Mr. Phil show uh, today has been very nice as I said last week we've been having some really crazy up and down weather and it's led us to having a few canceled shows so I really apologize for any reruns that you've had to sit through hopefully they were fun ones um, and as we're approaching spring we're hoping that it's not going to snow in June <laughs> It's a, a song, you know, that sometimes the snow comes out in June. Well, we're hoping it doesn't do that. And tonight, I would like to have the privilege of introducing to you my best friend and yours, our host, Mr. Phil. Hi. How are you tonight? All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Mr. Phil Show. Yeah. So. Like I said, spring is just... A matter of a day's way. Right, it is. It's always snow. Yeah. It's actually supposed to snow in, in our region where we are right now. We're in uh, Port Jervis, New York. We're supposed to be getting snow in this area Friday or Saturday. Uh, no, it's Isn't it next Friday week. Or no, next, next week. Next week, Friday. Yeah. But, but when, when spring comes in, I know that I did see on the news, the spring comes in the one day, the next day it's supposed to snow. Right, <laughs> but it's not what we're supposed to get. The thing is, this all our viewing area is going to get it. It's supposed to be coastal, so. Ah, okay. So we're nobody, not in this alone. No, okay. we're not in this alone. All of you from <laughs> New York City, also. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people got really whopped by that last one. So. Yeah. Let's hope they it's did, not we a big one. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the roads weren't great to drive on, but. You know, everything was so warm since the weather's been warm that uh, we really didn't have to shovel too much. Yeah, right. The only thing was the ice, in the, it, you know, icing up at night. Yeah, that's the bad thing. So, oh, man, you know, it's... Now, what have you been up to all week? Uh, Besides pestering me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the amount of time that we spend together. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I mean... Working. Working, okay. Yes. And Working and doing karaoke. Yeah. Taking care of that wonderful wife of yours. Right. Yes. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> and she's recovering. Sandy's recovering from a hip replacement, which is great. She's doing so good, and she's going to go for the next one in June. So we'll be signing off for uh, the end of the season, June, the first week of June. Yeah, the, uh, June 1st will be... Our last show of season 22. Right. And then she's going to get it on uh, the 5th, and then we're just taking the rest of the month off because we always take... Um, At least a little little uh, break in between. We do that all the time. We take like a month off. Anyway, either in uh, June or we do it in July. Mm -hmm. So this year, do it in uh, June. And then uh, we'll be starting again season 23 yeah imagine 23 seasons on uh july 6th and you know what's funny about it you know what it's called 23 on 23 
That's right. That's right. We're <laughs> Access 23, and we're celebrating 23 years of Mr. Phil. That's that's amazing. I I don't I think maybe Bob Barker maybe was on longer than you, but that's about or it. Or Joe Franklin. <laughs> Joe Franklin. Yeah. 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 Not many places uh, they they get to. Uh, Stay so long. Yeah, you know, the funniest thing, uh, speaking of numbers like this, this happened once before to me. Uh, we used to be called Access 8. Right, okay, so you're 8 uh, here. <laughs> yeah, we were called Access 8 for the uh, first few years that I was here. So um, in 2000, they had an anniversary show for me that Carl put together. Okay. Ca called Eight on eight at eight. Oh my goodness! That's right. Okay. Right. Eight years on channel eight at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. On Friday night. So eight on eight at eight. Wow. I mean, the newspapers came in and they made that the headline. <laughs> eight on eight at eight All with right. Mr. Phil. And two newspapers came in here. That's funny. Too. Oh wow. I would love to see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you got that in your archives somewhere, when we need to yeah, show a rerun, that, that would yeah, be a did. really good one I to mean, do. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, eight on eight at eight. And the funniest thing, that was celebrated on KCS, not on a Mr. Phil show. Oh. Carl okay. did it. So he celebrated your show on his because show. Because he started me right, out. Right, right. So he Very did nice. it. Very nice. Thank that, you, Carl. That yeah, was great. He, he did such a great job. He had the newspapers, the Times Herald the Record came, came in, the Pike County uh, Dispatch from Pennsylvania. Okay. Because at that time we were on in three states. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So then this time we'll have to do the same thing. Right. And it's going to be even bigger because now, every, as everybody knows, they're seeing us and a lot of people are going... Where'd the Mr. Phil show even come from? You're saying 23 years. I've only seen it on my TV for two or three years. We've just recently, we've expanded so recently, uh, gee, within the past what, five years at least, right? More than that. Maybe uh, more than that. We've just been adding stations. And yeah, we keep adding more stations and more stations. So right now we're being viewed in, um, we're being we're viewed live in our home area, Port Jerpus area. Then it'll go out to Brooklyn. Bro uh, yeah, first the Hudson Valley. Hud the Hudson the Valley. The Spectrum. Mm -hmm. Then Manhattan and Brooklyn. Manhattan so and, Brooklyn. And, and of course on YouTube TV. And then we put it on YouTube. It's just, uh, and then eventually Westchester. Yeah, exactly. Yes, we plan on getting Westchester and another, for at least for the start of the season for 23. Right. Yeah, and uh, so if you like what you see, there is no reason that you've got to keep your family in the dark about it. Even if they're across in Texas, they might be in California, as long as they've got a computer, have them go to YouTube TV and look up the Mr. Phil show. They right. might get a laugh. I mean, you know, we're pretty funny sometimes. Oh, yeah. We're more funny looking anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you believe now, tentatively, we're booked for the rest of season 22. Wow. All right, you hear that, everybody? We're booked for season 22, but that doesn't mean that we can't use the artists for twenty for season twenty three. Right. So if you're out and if you're out and about and you see us and we see you, we might just hook up, and that's how we find all of our guests. Right, right, right. And you know, and we'll always figure something else out. We got something extraordinary. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Carl gave us the rights. If we have to take an additional show or something for the way we're going. Right. Yeah, we may end up uh, doing a few Saturday shows. So every once in a while, you might want to check and see if there's a bonus Mr. Phil show on. Saturday, <laughs> Saturday we'll Night Live. call it a bonus Mr. Phil show. <laughs> Saturday Night Live with Mr. Yes. Phil. Yes. Well, yeah, that's with with Mr. Phil. I, do you think we can get Mr. Foot to squash you instead of Mr. Hand? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Phil, Mr. Phil, no. I mean... It's funny the way we go out places and everybody recognizes us. Oh, I know. At the holiday and when we come in there on Friday night, especially, these are out of town people. We're not yes. talking about yeah, local true. people. Yes, that's true. That's true. You know, this is no longer a local show only. Uh huh. It's local here, but I mean, yeah. uh, with the guests that we're getting coming from all over. If that's it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I, I've often I have people coming up to me in the store and they'll look at me and they'll say, "Wow, you look so familiar." I'm like, oh, well, thank you, I guess. Um, 
what is it, what kind of compliment do you give somebody when they say that? But I said, gee, really? I said, well, um, I have a TV show and I do a lot of karaoke and I also do some performances with my husband and they're like trying to think where the heck they got. Well, I don't know what I've seen you, but I know I've seen you doing one of those things. Right. Chances are they see me do a couple of those things. Right. And him too. He gets into just as much stuff as I do. I think we're, we're into everybody's everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so uh, it, it just gets crazy. Yeah. Um, we are going to be having our telethon. Yes, that's right. We've got to talk about. Oh, oh yeah, you got it. Three years. Come on, folks. We've got a telethon yes, coming on uh, April 29th. 29th. Sunday. This time we we decided to move it to a Sunday. Do it on a Sunday. Absolutely. Yeah. So everybody's and home on a Sunday, so we. Well, yeah, we usually do Saturdays, and. Uh, it's going to switch. We're just going to switch it up this year, see if we can create more revenue for the station. Um, the president of the station came in tonight and told me personally that we do have $200 to start our show off with for the um, telethon, yeah. telethon. And that was, um, let me see, what did he say? Um, the right for Life. Yes, right for life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And that will be the first amount that we will put up on the board. And, uh, you know, I want to challenge other uh, companies and, and other organizations. Take a donation because we like to put your names out there and we like to be in your shows. We like to do things. We do things for the Cancer Society. Yeah, we got the the re relay for life. Yes, we we walk for that, and we also perform for that. Right. Uh, so look look around. We'll probably be closer to home here, but you know, just something that you and all that know when it comes time time to donate. Look, Mr. Phil and Miss Mary, they're doing it. Right. We're donating not only our time and money, we're we're donating of ourselves to everyone. Right, and uh, all these places. You know, eventually we may be doing a telethon for them. That's true, and that and we have tried. We were ta we were talking to them about maybe doing some sort of a telethon right. in the future yeah. or um, relay for life. Yeah. Yeah. So that that'll be really cool. Right. Now uh, I understand you want you felt like singing tonight. Yes. You do. Yes. Well, okay. So this is a new version of an old song. Yes. So everybody should probably recognize the song, and then they'll say, hey, you amped it up a little bit. Yeah, right. It's uh, You Won't See Me Cry. You Won't See Me Cry. The uh, jazzed up country version of it. All right. You've always known it as a slow ballad, which is 18 years old now. All right. Well, it's time for it to grow up. Right. Very good. It was <laughs> the second song that Carl wrote to for me next to the Phil. When he wrote the Phil, wow. he wrote this the same Wow, okay. Time. Okay, well, I'd l I want you to get up and just bang it away. Okay. Hmm. You won't see me You won't see me cry, cause I got my pride. I know that you love him more than me. So pack all your things and go, cause I'm setting you free. But you won't see me cry You won't see me cry You won't see me cry Cause I got my pride Where did I go wrong? I thought I had it made but then he came back and stole you away. But you won't see me cry. 
On my Before we introduce our guest, we have been putting up segments yes. of Gargarelli, right? Which is a friend of ours, Gene Faccarelli, and his his friend's name is um, I you know I'm sorry, Gar Gar Gargaro. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, and uh, they've been putting busy, very busy, putting all these segments together for us to air every week and this is about the time that we like to take the time to put that on there for everyone to see right. some of them are comical some of them are just musical <laughs> some of them are comical musical right <laughs> so let's see what we have this week okay <laughs> you never know what them. you never know we, yeah we, we're you know we don't watch it we don't preview them we want to see them when everybody else does right okay folks so as soon as we get the tape rolling. Okay, in the meantime, we can get out your popcorn and potato <laughs> chips. <laughs> it's funny. That's one thing that they insisted uh, that they get a holiday in for uh, karaoke. It's popcorn. Now you're walking in the karaoke uh, by the bar. There's a popcorn machine. So everybody can have popcorn with their beer. <laughs> They've been taking care of us the holiday, and they've been serving us food there. Yeah, it's been very good. I mean, I, I suggest anybody that wants to go out for a night of karaoke, come to Middletown uh, a Holiday Inn from 9 to 12. Yeah. Melissa loves the popcorn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people do. Pete does, too. <laughs> These are just people that we know that you guys have met before, but it's been a while. Yeah, Pete used to be a uh, producer here before Ken came on board. Yeah. That looks like okay. we're ready. Welcome to A Few Minutes with Gargarelli. You know, one of the very first video projects we tackled was a little character we called the Plunk. 
We want to thank Paul Winchell for coming up with the original idea. Gargarelli just added its own little twist to it. And you know, our original Plunk was recorded over 40 years ago, and he performed the Beatles song, Why Don't We Do It In The Road? We call him Plunk Daddy. He's got a new name. And now, he mostly tells jokes. So here he is, the new Plunk Daddy. We hope you like it. Enjoy a few minutes with Gargarelli. into a bar and says, bartender, I would like a scotch and soda, please. And the bartender says, would scotch and soda coming right up? The guy looks at the bartender and says, bartender, why are you making fun of me? Bartender says, I'm not making fun of you. This is the way I talk. So he says, no, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Can I have my scotch and soda now? Bartender serves him the scotch and soda. And another guy walks into a bar, sits at the stool and says, bartender, give me a beer. And the bartender says, one beer coming right up. And the first guy looks at the bartender and says, hey, I thought you said you weren't making fun of me. And the bartender said, I wasn't making fun of you. I was making fun of him. <laughs> So a priest and a rabbi decide they're going to chip in and buy a car together. The car is currently at the priest's house, and when the rabbi goes over there, he sees the priest sprinkling water on the car. So the rabbi says, what are you doing? Why are you sprinkling water on the car? And the priest says, it's holy water. I'm blessing the car. It's holy water. So the rabbi goes into the trunk and pulls out a hacksaw and takes two inches off the tailpipe. <laughs> That was that was fun this time. Yeah. yeah. Yes, <laughs> it was. Different. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh gosh. Where do they come up with this? A name stuff? that he mentioned, Paul Winchell. I remember oh, this yes. guy. Paul Winchell, he used to be a ventriloquist and he used to have uh, uh, two puppets, one named Jerry Mahoney and the, mm. the other named Knucklehead Smith. Isn't he the same guy who did the voice for Piglet and Winnie the Pooh? Yeah. Oh, uh, you remember? Of course I remember. Oh, I know all things Pooh related. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and I'm talking Winnie the Pooh. So, um, you know, I, when we keep getting these little segments, it's fun because it gives us a chance to take a break for a second and for people to see other things that uh, are going on around us. Yeah, right. And, you know, Gene and his friend, they're just, they're, they're hysterical. Oh, yeah, they yeah. are. I love the, the joke with the uh, holy water in the car. <laughs> it's funny. Well, we, I tease him all the time because I'm Christian, he's Jewish. So we're always back and forth about <laughs> different things about that. So when he, they said that joke, it was just... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we were cracking up. It was totally appropriate. It's definitely something we would have said to each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. So now I would like to introduce to you tonight's star. And he's going to be playing music for us. Come all the way from Kentucky which is a large honor for us that you came all the way from Kentucky. Joe, can you come and sit at the stage with us? This is Joe Camulia. I have a seat. There you go. Howdy. So did you watch that little segment too? Uh, no, I didn't actually. Ah. I was uh, uh, flipping through some of my songs and getting my harmonicas and things ready. You know, you've got to be prepared. 
You do. Well, so um, like I just said to people, you came up to see us from Kentucky. That's right. I like to come to the Hudson Valley, to Pennsylvania, New York area, and see my friends and uh, play music. And, okay. and of course, uh, uh, I don't know if Phil told you, but I'm running for president. Yeah, you know, you mentioned something to me about that, and it yeah. was, there was something silly about it. Well, I'm running with the pizza party. The pizza party. Yeah, and uh, it's really important when you're a political camp, uh, a candidate mm -hmm. to uh, get uh, TV exposure, so I'm glad that this is the first chance to get on TV with my um, campaign. Well, see that? And, we um, can say we've launched your campaign. Then. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> All right, exactly. that's the pizza party, not to be mistaken for the tea party. True, true. Although, with pizza, you can have tea if you want. You can, but you know what? It doesn't taste doesn't so good. Really, it doesn't really. You know, yeah. you know it does, just doesn't work. Doesn't. But, um, so you said, though, that you, um, you grew up in our area, in Marlboro. True, yeah. And went down to Kentucky. How long have you been there? Around 25 years ago. Yeah. Wow, yep. okay. Went down to Kentucky. All right. Wow. Yeah. What drove you to going to Kentucky? I thought you were going to say what drove me. I was going to say, <laughs> let's see. It was my, I did drive a little Ford. I drove a Ford Escort. Oh, but, oh, um, okay. oh, oh I, yeah, I remember them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had a Mercury Lynx wagon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved my little Fords. Now I have a Subaru. Oh, but, okay. Um, but I had an idea in my mind that I would uh, live in the woods, kind of like Abraham Lincoln, and okay. build a little cabin. You might as well go to Kentucky then. Well, yeah. I thought so, you know, but... Sometimes the ideas that we have in our mind and reality are two different things. Oh. So but anyway, you know, wow. so I Kentucky's guess, pretty. Can you play the, the, do you know the song, the theme song, Kentucky? My old Kentucky yeah. home? I really don't. And uh, <clears throat> strangely, I don't know if, we should, if I should say this uh, uh, on television, because I wouldn't want any Kentuckians to hear this, but I don't really care for that song. I'm not a big fan of my old Kentucky home. They. The funniest thing about that song, every year at the Kentucky Derby. Uh, that's right, when they start. They have everybody get up in the hall, Churchill Downs. Yeah. And first they'll do the national anthem, and then they'll have everybody sing My Old Kentucky Home. You know, it, and it might be a good song. The song I like to sing that deals with uh, states mm -hmm. is uh, West Virginia's national anthem, they call it. Which okay. Is John Denver's song, oh. Country Roads. Country Roads, wow. that, right. I like that song, you know, West Virginia. I, I can relate to that more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You know, but hey. You know. you know, it's it's to, to me it reminds me of like in high school when they would have, um, you know, everybody get together and, and do a, um, a rally and everybody got to sing their alma mater, you know. They sing their, so, their school song and... Most people just didn't like it, but they went along and they sang it anyway because everybody was doing it. And it gave yeah. everybody a sense of um, being whole, and being together, and yeah. you know, standing together. So. Yeah. so Kentucky has a, a state song. Oh. West Virginia does. I don't know. Does New I York? Know. New York must yeah. have what? Uh, New York, New York. New York, New York. Oh, yeah. and what about New York State of Mind? Is that who did that? New did York it, State of Mind is, is that like a second Billy Joel. runner up, maybe to. New York? It very well could be. I don't know. We don't. Right, know but New York, New York is the, uh, Frank Sinatra. That's, that's the main Frank song. Sinatra. Th that's even the theme song of the Yankees. Even though the Yank yes. New York Yankees have their own song. Okay. They play that at all the games, okay. and New York, New York has taken over. In fact, on New Year's Eve, uh, if you watch uh, what used to be Dick Clark, they still call right. Dick Clark's yes. rocking yeah. New Year's Eve. Ryan Seacrest now. Yeah, Ryan Seacrest. Okay. They'll play a few bars of Auld Lang Syne and go right into New York, New York. Yeah. Yes. See, yeah. yeah something, it's, it's something familiar, too. That yeah. I like, now that I like. I yeah. Like, <laughs> So, <clears throat> so where do you get your inspiration for writing songs? I mean, how long have you been writing them? Uh, I've been writing songs you've since. Had thousands. <laughs> yeah, I've written probably between ten and fifteen thousand songs. Wow. Uh, as far as I know, I think I'm the most prolific songwriter, l at least presently living. If there's someone else, they can email me and we could talk about it. But I know Woody Guthrie wrote around twenty thousand. They say. Wow. They found the lyrics to twenty thousand. But anyway, what happened with me is. In seventh grade, I woke up in the middle of the night, uh, kind of like startled, right. and, and wrote three songs, uh, just out of the blue. And um, by 11th grade, 
Uh, I took a little break, by the way. Okay. And I should tell you, by 11th grade, I had 30 songs, and six of them were about Jesus. Oh. And at the time, I wasn't a believer, um, and, uh, but I looked at these songs, and they were like my best ones, and I, I began to talk to mm -hmm. the Lord in that regard, and, and felt that he must have been giving me these songs. So, That's right. Um, but anyway, since then, uh, it's been a few hundred a year, or several hundred a year. They wow. Just keep they just pop in there and... If I'm driving down the road, and uh, um, any kind of subject, whether it's pizza... Sure. ...or uh, butterflies, farmers, just life, and you know, there's so much to write about, right? But just, there you mm -hmm. go. So, uh, and, and my music, when I say this too, it's not that it's gospel music. It's right. just songs about life, mm -hmm. and yeah. um, so <clears throat> instead of being gospel, they're more of an uplifting, life-affirming kind of songs. Yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah, that that's good. That's that's the kind of stuff I like to do too, and I, I can totally relate to you saying that you you jumped out of bed, and you, you wrote those songs right away. Uh, I have nights like that. I haven't written any songs. I do poems, but uh, yeah, if you don't get up and you don't write it down. You have a hard time staying asleep or staying in bed. It's so true. It's like, it's, it's, it's so many times I want to sleep. You know, I'd rather right. sleep. There's times I, I'll like, I'll wake up at two or three in the morning. It's like, oh, there's a melody in my head. It's yes. like, no, I, I'd rather go to sleep. Yes. You know, but you got to get up and If you and don't write put it. it on paper, you're never going to have it out of your head enough to sleep. Yes. That's something. I've noticed that. Yep. yep. So, um, now what's the very first song you ever wrote? Um, as I recall, it, it, uh, in seventh grade, it was dealing with, believe it or not, the Catholics and the Protestants fighting in Ireland. Okay. And, and so I wrote a song. It went like, um, ain't it time we stop all our fighting? That's what, ain't it? It went like this. Here it goes. Ain't it time we stop all our fighting? Ain't it time we stop all our fussing around? Ain't it time? Ain't it time? We lay all our hatred down. It's a seventh grader making up a song. But that was my first okay. song, as I recall. It's that still yeah. you know for a seventh grader to have that kind of insight yeah. is 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 amazing too. So I want to tell you something though. So I wrote these three songs. Mm -hmm. Two were these anti-war songs because okay. you know the Vietnam War is going right. on, and one was a love song, right? Huh. So I wrote this love song, and somehow I gave it to someone on the school bus. I don't know why I did this. It might have been my sister, I can't remember. I gave them the song to look at it, because I guess I thought it was a nice song. But they passed it around the school bus, my song. Oh no. And it so embarrassed me and shocked me that I didn't write another song until ninth grade, two years later. So wow. I was just like, oh. Anyway. Oh, imagine. Wow. <laughs> uh, it's, it's like me, I, you know, I, I tense up and, and tend to sing better uh, when I'm not singing for people that I'm familiar with. That so used to be the case, yeah. yeah when you're, you're right. not in front of people that know you, right. you can act out a little bit more. I, I do better if it's a few people I don't know, and, uh, but, uh, and if it's not live TV. Right. Yeah. Well, guess what, honey? This is live TV. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is. <laughs> so anything we say or anything we do, everybody gets to see every it's little keeps. bit of it. There it's the keeps. So, there, you yeah. there you go. <laughs> so you also said something to me uh, that you were recording today? Today I went to Pleasant Valley and saw a good friend of mine. His name is Steve Repka. Okay. He's in a band called Brother Z. And uh, in his uh, apartment, we recorded a handful of songs. Wow, okay. And how many albums do you have? I've lost track, but I think it's somewhere around 30 or 40. Wow. Yeah. Wow. One I of mean, these days, one of these days I'll get them on the web. Uh, okay. But right. a couple of months ago with Steve, we recorded uh, 22 songs in his uh, home studio, and he did put up uh, 21 of them uh, on the web at, uh, the address is Bandcamp. Average yeah. American dreamers. So okay, before okay. you go up, I just want to ask: Have you done anything else like this TV before, or anything close to it? Ever, ever done TV before? Um, years ago, I was on a, a morning show in Louisiana and, mm -hmm. and did one of my songs there, uh, and a couple times, but it's been a while. 
Right. Yeah, I've wow. kind of, I've, I was in semi-retirement for about 20 years, so I'm oh. coming out of retirement. Okay. Well, there's nothing to get you moving better than a little music. Um, okay. Now, uh, have, has anybody ever picked up any of your songs and put them on their albums and famous well, people or anything? Well, they probably have, but they haven't told me. Oh, well, Honestly. okay. Hmm. No. They shouldn't keep that secret, should they? <laughs> well, why don't we have you get over, yeah, okay, um, let's get yourself do it. ready, sure. and we're going to have, uh, we're going to have Joe. Kamulia, he is going to go over and he's, actually he's got a couple of things. He's got his guitar over there, he's got a harmonica over there. And we're just going to get to hear just a, a, a little teeny tiny bit of the songs that he's written. Right. I can't imagine having written that many songs. No, neither can I. I mean, you know, I'm, my husband's been after me to write one song. Right. For, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just not happening. So, Joe, as soon as you're ready, give us the nod. Okay, let's okay. go. We're going to turn yes, it over go. to the star of the show tonight. That would be Joe Carmulia.
Thanks. So growing up in Marlboro, my dad and my brothers and sisters, we would go fishing in the Hudson River. And uh, so that's a song about that. A few years ago, my kids, I have three kids. Right now they're 18, 17, no, wait a minute. They're 19, 18, and 16. But when they were a little younger, about five years ago, We took a little train ride down to New York City. And we were going to go to a Central Park. So we got on the subway to get to Central Park. But um, we, had, we had some problems, and we never did find Central Park. I know it's there somewhere in New York City, but we got some directions and got off couple different times, but we couldn't find it, but I did write a song based on a little bit of experience. Well, I did a subway singing in, in New York City uh, many years ago in the 80s. In the early 80s, I was a uh, subway singer in Boston. And um, 
I became a subway singer out of uh, necessity, I suppose. Um, I initially went to Boston to spend a weekend to experience homelessness. I wanted to see what it was like to be homeless. And I thought maybe it could uh, help me understand uh, those that are suffering. And um, so I, I went up there for a, a weekend and what I thought was going to be a weekend turned to nine months and the reason is it was just too interesting and I just had to ride the story out. I, um, at the time I was a senior in Bible college and it was actually winter break and uh, I didn't go back to graduate with my uh, classmates. Matter of fact, at one point in time I was helping uh, someone um, uh, who had an alcoholic problem in, uh, in a hospital. I brought him to a hospital and uh, he was having some problems and I called my classmates in, uh, at the college and I asked for some help to get him to a rehab. And uh, the word got back that Joe was in a hospital, in a mental hospital. So, so I was up there helping uh, people and writing songs and being a subway singer and my classmates didn't see me. They thought I was in a mental hospital. And uh, when graduation came, I went down to go visit them and uh, some of them were like standoffish, you know. But um, here's a song about a fella uh, that I heard about and then I actually got to meet him. Um, Shine and there ain't many friends. 
friends he's been able to find He's alone, no place left to go He's so alone Johnny, don't you know Johnny, don't you know Thank you. Thanks. You know, I was going to, um, check with, uh, some people about uh, what songs to play and what songs not to play. Maybe I could check with you all. Well, I have a, I have a handful of my in front of me, and a lot of times we just kind of go with the flow as a folk singer. Uh, often I travel around and uh, find a, a place to, to play, and uh, whatever comes into my head, I'll play a song. Um, and sometimes I debate, which one is it? Will it be this one? Will it be that one? Will it be the next one? Let's see. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to do a song called In the Thunder at this point in time. Let's get the A harmonica on. This one I recorded a couple months ago with my friend Steve and it is on uh, Bandcamp Average American Dreamers. And yeah.
Uh, my mic. Oh, there we go. I've got a microphone. Hello, Mary. Okay. <laughs> that was really, really nice. Uh, I really like the uh, the whole vibe. The whole I like the folk thing anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, it's, it's most great. Most people do like the acoustic guitar, a little harmonica, that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, that, that's what my husband and I do. Right, we do yes. acoustic guitar. I don't play harmonica. My grandfather used to, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't inherit that skill. So, uh, you know, now, um, where are you going to be next if somebody can go see you? Tomorrow I'm actually playing in New Paltz at a place called The Cafeteria. It's at 58 Main Street in New Paltz. Oh, I think a lot of people around here probably know that. You know, I know that, that spot. Mm -hmm. One more time. And it's 7 o'clock. And I'll be sharing the stage uh, with a fellow called Shlomo Franklin. And, and his band. Franklin. Yeah, and, and his music is quite amazing. Oh, quite what amazing. kind of music does he do? Well, it's also uh, somewhat acoustical, yeah. Okay, yeah. well, maybe you'll have to send him a referral, send us a referral, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, could have, we could have you both on. Yeah. That's great. Just kind of, you know, folk and roll instead of rock and roll. Yeah. True, <laughs> true. So thanks for coming on, and we're going to ask you to take thanks. it out. Thanks for having us me out. Here. We got a few minutes for credits. And uh, we want to thank all of you for watching on all our stations, including our very own Access 23 TV, Port Jervis, New York, the little city with the big heart. That's right. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Joe, for coming yes. all the way from Kentucky. And uh, we you. wish you the best of luck in your travels. And I uh, appreciate your vote as well. Oh, yes, yes. Remember, he is voting. He is going to run for president. And on the pizza party, and I, you know, who doesn't like pizza? Who doesn't? Okay. So well, we'll have to have you back if you're willing to come back one day. And sure when you're getting more into your co we'll campaign, we'll just throw you on there. Because I'm looking yeah. for votes in Port Jervis and, and more gigs in the area. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, okay, we're going to let Joe take it out then. Thank All you very right, much, just everyone. Lay it out. Thank you, Joe. Good night, everybody. Well, here's the pizza party theme song. There's an easy solution to the problems of this world I think it may have been mentioned once before Or maybe more Instead of making bombs, cruise missiles and guns Let's start making pizza Buy a bunch of flour and sauce And let's make pizza And not nuclear bombs Let's make pizza Not nuclear bombs Let's make pizza Not nuclear bombs Let's make pizza Not nuclear bombs See a bomb could put a big dent in the road Kill little children and even the old Destroy our homes, leave us out in the cold Could be the end of this world we now know So, I'm sure if you compare the cost You'll say it's a whole lot better investment To buy a bunch of flour and sauce Let's make pizza, not nuclear bombs. 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 I got a good idea for world peace. I think we should get one of those C-5 cargo planes loaded up with about 10,000 pizza pies. We'll just fly over some country that's given us a problem. They'll look up and they'll say, it's an American invasion. We'll say, no friends, it's an American pizza party. Have a slice. Let's make pizza, not nuclear.